Twinkle twinkle lazy star. How me wonder what you are. Up above lazy world. Like lazy potato in the sky. Twinkle twinkle lazy star. How me wonder what you are. Dave, can you help kids with lazy homework? Brian need help with lazy homework. Not now Catherine. Me sing twinkle twinkle lazy star. Me watch potato melon. Dave, you too old to sing lazy song. You too old to watch potato melon. Me going to turn off lazy TV now. Wa me want to sing lazy song 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 turn lazy TV back on absolutely no I'm not turning the TV back on, not until you stop acting childish, and realize there are other things to do besides watching Coco Melon all day long. Come on Catherine. I was singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but then you came into the living room and turned off the TV. How could you do this to me entitled Catherine? Why? Dave, we've gone over this over 9,000 times. You need to take a break from the TV every now and then. It's not good to be watching TV all day long. So, why don't you go help Brian and Emma with their homework assignments? Mom, why lazy dad throw another lazy tantrum? Brian, your dad want to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Lazy Star. And he is too old to sing lazy baby songs. This song for babies only. Me not too old to sing baby songs. 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 Me going to cry like motor car in three, two, one. No. No 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 Dave you can throw lazy tantrum. Me go do other things. Wait Catherine, turn lazy TV back on. Why Catherine not turn lazy TV back on? Because, childish dad, you didn't eat all of your potatoes. Okay, thanks for your time. I'm going to look for someone else to babysit Joseph while we're at Olive Garden. You have a nice rest of your day Ms. Gray. Every single babysitter I called isn't available to look after Joseph while we're at Olive Garden. So, what are we going to do about this? Let's have Thora come over and watch over Joseph. That sounds like a good idea Jane. And I think Joseph is going to behave well for Thora, because he always has misbehaved for the other babysitters we hired. He usually behaves for Thora, compared to other babysitters. I don't know the reason why. Now I remember, you're right about that. Because otherwise he will still be grounded. Anyways, I don't know why he tends to behave better for Grandma Thora. This is interesting. I'm going to call my mother right now so that she can watch over Joseph while we're at the restaurant. Kids, can you come downstairs? Your father and I have some good news we would like to share with you. Kids, because D.W. and Kate continue getting good grades in school, we were thinking of celebrating by having dinner at Olive Garden. Oh my goodness, I really like Olive Garden. They have some of the best pizzas and pasta dishes in the whole wide world. And it has been a long time since I last ate at Olive Garden. Joseph, 
I'm afraid that you won't be coming with us to Olive Garden. You're getting another babysitter. You must be kidding me, because I'm working with my tutor, like almost every day. We know that you're doing well working with your tutor, and your academic performance is improving. But because you tend to misbehave a lot, Joseph, I don't think it's a good idea for you to come with us. Grandma Thora will be looking after you while we're in town. I want to go to Olive Garden. 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 Joseph, don't get us started with your childish tantrums. This is exactly why we're having Grandma Thora look after you. But I really want pizza and breadsticks from Olive Garden. Is it that difficult to ask for? Joseph, your mother is right. Because you can't behave yourself in public places, that's why we're not taking you to Olive Garden with us. Until you can learn to behave yourself. <coughs> That's it, Joseph, you can go wait in your room before Grandma Thora comes. <laughs> Joseph, you can come downstairs, I'm here. Grandma Thora, it's so good to see you, after all of this time. I know, it's been months since I last saw you. How have you been? I've been doing good, despite being grounded a lot. And you? I'm doing good as well, thank you for asking. Say, I'm going to make us some lunch very soon. What were you thinking about getting? I was thinking... Let's order pizza and breadsticks from Olive Garden, on Uber Eats. Are you serious? Joseph, I'm afraid I can't do that. I am not familiar with Uber Eats, number one, and number two, I was going make us something that I know you're going to really like. Grandma Thora, you got to be kidding me. It's 2024, and everyone uses Uber Eats to get food nowadays. No, I'm not kidding. I don't know how to order food with an app, and second of all, your parents don't want me ordering food from somewhere. I want pizza and breadsticks for lunch, and I want them from Olive Garden. Is that much to ask for? I'm not ordering food from the internet, like I told you already. Instead, I am making lunch for both of us. Now, I suggest you calm down. I want pizza and breadsticks. 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 Joseph, you never behaved this childish for me in a very long time. And you're 12 years old already? I'm going to go to the kitchen, and you can wait for lunch. Please register me. Please register a port. It should be ready in about 30 to 45 minutes. How could you call me childish? I am just upset that you don't want to order me some pizza and breadsticks from Olive Garden. Is it that complicated to go on Uber Eats and order something from Olive Garden? 
I'm going to my room until lunch is ready. Joseph, lunch is ready. You can come downstairs. Wow, Grandma Thora, did you make the pizza and breadsticks? Yes, I made them just for you, because I know how much you like pizza and breadsticks. Now, let's take a seat and dig into this delicious pizza. Wow, Grandma Thora, I didn't think I was actually going to like your pizza, but I have to say you make the best pizzas that I have ever had. This is so much better than the pizzas at Olive Garden. Same with the breadsticks. Thank you very much for your kind words, Joseph. I'm glad you liked my pizza. Say, next time you come over to my house, I will make you pizza and breadsticks. How does that sound? Grandma Thora. I would like to apologize for how I behaved earlier. Joseph, thanks for apologizing. I appreciate that. I will forgive you. And feel free to come by any time, and we can have pizza and breadsticks. Joseph, I don't want to tell you this, but I don't have the ingredients to make the pizza and breadsticks. How about I make us hamburgers instead? What do you mean, Grandma Thora? I thought you would always make us pizza and breadsticks. To tell you this, I ran out of everything to make the pizza and breadsticks, but don't worry, we can have hamburgers instead like I said. I want pizza and breadsticks, 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 I want pizza and breadsticks. Joseph Christopher, stop this childish behavior. I am very disappointed in you. You know what is really making me angry? The fact that I'm in the 6th grade instead of preschool. I don't get to do any of the fun stuff that preschoolers get to do, like eating popcorn in class, singing my favorite songs, coloring with crayons, taking a nap for 45 minutes, no exams, no homework. About a year ago, Dave the childish preschool bus driver refused to let me board his bus because I'm not a preschooler. This is so not fair. I have to figure out how I can go back to preschool and stay there forever. You know what? I'm going to get Dave terminated from his job. First, what I'll do is build a remote-controlled robot that looks just like Dave. The day after, I will head on over to the school administration building, which is where the school buses are parked, then make the robot drive Dave's bus, skipping every single stop, and driving to wherever I want the bus to be going. I'm also going to make the robot sing baby songs to bass and other bus drivers. Of course, the real Dave is going to be let go from his job. Ha 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 I can't wait to see the look on Dave's face when he finds out he has been terminated from his job.
and then I'll get to go back to preschool. But first, I have to make the robot. Good thing my parents are not home yet, so I have time to go in the garage and build the robot. The parts to make it are in the closet. Okay, now that I am in the garage, I am going to build the robot, and since I have done this many times before, I know what to do. Using GoAnimate logic, I will get this done in like an hour, two at most. Yay, I just made the robot. And like I said, because of GoAnimate logic, this took me only an hour to complete. Now, I will take the robot upstairs to my room, and tomorrow, I will head over to the school administration building early in the morning, before my parents get up. I can't wait to see the look on Dave's face when he's told he's been let go from his job. It's 5.15 in the morning, time to get the robot and take it over to the school administration building. I should get there before Dave does, and then the robot will be driving the school bus. Alright, I just made it to the administration building before Dave arrives. And using this controller, I am going to make the robot drive the preschool bus, skipping all bus stops, and driving around GoAnimate City. The robot will be singing baby songs to bass, and other bus drivers. However, I also installed technology so that the robot stops for red lights, pedestrians, and obeys the speed limit. Now, I better go hide in the bushes before Dave, or anyone sees me. Also, I can talk into the controller so that the robot does everything I say. Here goes nothing. Robot Dave, start singing the wheels on the bus to Cole, who is driving bus 46. And keep singing it non-stop. If he tells you to stop, pull the bus over to the side of the road, and throw a tantrum. 84 to 46, I'm going to sing you a song that I know you're going to like. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and close, open and close, open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close, all through the town. Forty six to eighty four. Don't tell me you're going back to your old ways, and don't even waste my time singing preschool songs over the walkie-talkie. Just do your job, okay? The driver on the bus says move on back, move on back, move on back. The driver on the bus says move on back, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish swish swish, swish swish swish, swish swish swish. The wipers on the bus go swish swish swish, all through the town. 'Dave, seriously, you're wasting my time, and you're wasting your time as well. I don't need to hear you singing your silly baby songs, okay? Hey, don't call my favorite songs silly. They are not silly. They are the best songs in the whole wide world, and everyone enjoys listening to them. They're not just for babies. Why? 
want to sing preschool songs. I 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 want to sing preschool songs. Come on, I want you to let me sing preschool songs. They're the best songs in the whole wild world. Why? Dave, what has gotten into you? You never threw childish tantrums in over a year. I don't think you really moved on from those days. And I'm going to have to report you to base. I'm not wanting to work with a man-child, ever again. Don't call me childish. 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 All right, Dave, you have a wonderful day at work. I will get Brian and Emma ready for school. I will see you later this afternoon, Catherine. Wait, what in the world is this? Why is my bus parked in front of my house? And I see a robot inside the bus, it looks just like me, and it's throwing a childish tantrum in the bus. I better see what is going on. Base to 84, report back to the school administration building immediately. I repeat, base to 84, report back to the school administration building immediately. What? I don't want to go back to the administration building. I don't want to go back to the administration building. I don't want to go back to the administration building. I don't want to go back to the administration building. I don't want to go back to the administration building. I don't want to go back to the administration building. I want to keep driving this bus and sing the wheels on the bus. Why? No, you're going to stop throwing your childish tantrums and you're going to report back to base. The superintendent and I need to have a serious talk with you. Well, I'll have to enter through the back of the bus, because the robot is not letting me through the front doors. Hold it right there, you childish robot. Why did you drive the bus in front of my house? Hey, don't call me childish. I'm just upset that none of the other bus drivers want to listen to me singing the wheels on the bus. Also, I own this bus, in case you didn't know, so you need to get off. No. I am the bus driver. And I have a feeling some troublemaker is behind all of this. Now, I'm going to put this silly robot in one of the seats, because I'm showing this to the transportation director and the superintendent. Hey, put me down this instant. I do not deserve to be treated like this. Stop it. Just stop it. I don't want to hear another word from you. Dave, what has gone through your mind lately? We thought you were not going to act childish on the job anymore. Wait, what is that? Superintendent Chandler, I found this robot on the preschool and kindergarten bus, and the bus was parked outside of my house when I was about to come here and clock in. So, my guess is some troublemakers behind all of this. I was just showing the transportation director some surveillance footage that was taken on your bus, Dave. And it shows you entering the bus from the back and confronting the robot that looks like you. 
I say this because we've had a lot of instances of troublemakers getting other students suspended and whatnot by creating robots or suits that look like said students. Dave, I am so sorry about this confusion. I thought all of this time that you have gone back to your childish ways. I didn't realize it was a robot that was singing the wheels on bus on the walkie-talkie, and then throwing a childish tantrum. Dave, we just found surveillance footage from earlier, and we know who was behind trying to get you to lose your job. Alright, I just made it to the administration building before Dave arrives. And using this controller, I'm going to make the robot drive the preschool bus, skipping all bus stops, and driving around GoAnimate City. The robot will be singing baby songs to bass, and other bus drivers. However, I also installed technology so that the robot stops for red lights, pedestrians, and obeys the speed limit. Now, I better go hide in the bushes before Dave, or anyone sees me. Oh, my goodness, I had a feeling it was Joseph who was behind this. A year ago, he wanted to ride my bus to preschool, and then he also bothered my family a few times while we were shopping, and while we were having lunch somewhere. Dave, you go pick up the kindergarten and preschool students, and I'm going to head on over to Joseph's school and I need to have a talk with him and his principal. I just saw in the surveillance that he left the administration building. Joseph Red, report to the office immediately. Joseph Red, report to the office immediately. Oh no, Superintendent Chandler. What are you doing here? Joseph, you know very well what you were doing this morning. We saw everything on the surveillance cameras. And I even saved the video footage on my phone to show to your principal. I never did anything. I should not be in trouble. Joseph, don't lie to us to try and get out of trouble. It's only going to make the situation worse. Now, why did you try to get Mr. Dave Johnson terminated from his bus driving job? by having a robot that looks just like him drive his bus, have unnecessary conversations with base and other bus drivers, and then have the robot throw childish tantrums. Look, you entitled Catherines, I did that because last year, Dave refused to let me on his bus, and I wanted to go to preschool, not fifth grade. And the world should know that I belong in preschool, not the silly fifth grade. You're 12 years old, and you had to repeat the fifth grade this year. And you can't be in preschool of this age. More importantly, what you did, we take this very seriously. Dave nearly got terminated from his job because of that. And we were about to look for a new preschool bus driver. For this, you will be serving detention with Mr. Parker every day after school, and you're also going to have to attend summer school, despite the fact that you're improving academically with your tutor. <laughs> I don't want to go to summer school. 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 Please, I'll behave next time. Joseph, stop it. And get up off the floor right now. You're going to summer school, and that is final. Another thing, you will also be doing community service at the administration building every Saturday from 10 in the morning to noon, until the end of the school year. Joseph, get out of my office, now. You can go back to class, and I will be calling your parents about what you did. Wah. 
Joseph Christopher Reed, we cannot believe that you tried to get Dave terminated from his job. You know very well that he enjoys driving preschoolers and kindergartners to and from school. That is it. Also, you're going to have to perform community service at the school administration building. For this you are grounded for the rest of the school year, and we're going to make sure that you're not going to go anywhere near the Johnsons. Seriously Joseph, you need to leave them alone. Now go upstairs to your room, and think about what you did. Stop it! Just stop it! <laughs> You know what, I'm excited to go to my first Coco Melon live show. I've been wanting to go, and now I'm finally here. That's right, Alan. And you've earned money to buy the tickets, just by helping your family, and also helping my family with household chores. That being said, who is your favorite character from Coco Melon? No doubt, it's JJ. I especially enjoy it when he is laughing, and I hear it in a lot of songs. And what about you, Sarah? That's a tough one to answer. But I would have to say, the entire Coco Melon family, and I also like Miss Appleberry, the animal characters in JJ's Animal Adventures videos. Really, I never knew you liked all Coco Melon characters. I actually like all of them, such that I don't really have a favorite character from that series. Anyways, I think the best part of this concert will be singing our favorite songs. I agree. I especially am looking forward to singing head, shoulders, knees and toes. If they are singing that song in this concert. If not, I like old MacDonald had a farm, the wheels on the bus, and also the original Coco Melon songs. Excuse me, but why do I see two teenagers attending a Coco Melon concert? Yes, he is my best friend, and we both like Coco Melon. So we decided to attend a Coco Melon live show. Is there a problem with that? I don't think so. I couldn't help but notice, you two are like 16 or 17 years old, and rather, people your age shouldn't be attending Coco Melon live shows. Excuse me, but what is wrong with us attending Coco Melon live? Me and my best friend watch Coco Melon every day at school during independent study, and we actually enjoy watching their videos and singing their songs. But the rest of the people coming here brought their toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners here. You two never did. Have you taken into consideration that you're too old for Coco Melon, and you should be watching shows that are more for your age, like Friends? Now you just listen here, Alan has autism, and he is interested in kids' shows. In fact, I know a lot of people who are older than we are who still like preschool shows, especially ones from their childhood. We don't have to do as you say. Get it? Okay, don't you care what other people think? It's not proper for people your age to be attending Coco Melon Live, or watching preschool shows for that matter. You'll end up being made fun of. Excuse me, won't you leave these two alone, for crying out loud? There are many grown-ups attending this show. Yes, most of them have brought their kids with them. But that doesn't mean you can tell people that they can't attend it because you think they're too old for Coco Melon. Look, I agree with what that woman just said. Alan is happy about being at Coco Melon Live. Making fun of him won't change that, plus, it is not nice to do that. Yeah, that is who I am, so be quiet. I like Coco Melon, and I will watch Coco Melon for as long as I want. So why don't you go away and complain to other managers? Mommy, I think we should go sit somewhere else. This is getting embarrassing. I agree with you. Where are your parents? I need to have a talk with them because I can see that they did not raise either of you properly. So I'm going to teach them how to do so.
I don't know why they let you watch baby shows while you're 16 or 17 years old. Well, you entitled Catherine. Teaching respect means that you accept people for who they are. Maybe you want to reflect on that. I think the two of you should be in a special school or something. Watching baby shows and you're in high school. Well, sorry to tell you, but my best friend and I are both doing independent study in the school's quiet room. He is doing very well despite not being in a regular classroom. And as a matter of fact, he enjoys the quiet room. Entitled Karens like you should go to a special school. Now leave us alone, or we will get security to deal with you. We want to enjoy this concert. Okay, fine. I'm going to go to the school superintendent and have you both transferred to the special school. <laughs> The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The doors on the bus go open and close, open and close, open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close, all through the town. Come on, sing along. The driver on the bus says move on back, move on back, move on back. The driver on the bus says move on back, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish swish swish, swish swish swish, swish swish swish. The wipers on the bus go swish swish swish, all through the town. Pencils, check. Folders, check. Binder, check. Homework, check. Lunch, check. Composition notebooks, check. Looks like I'm all set for school. Time to head out to the bus stop before the bus comes. You know what I'm thinking? I'm not going to the special school. I'm going back to Lakewood Elementary because that is where I actually belong. And I also belong in Miss Stillwater's class, not Mr. Parker. I made very good timing because the bus is going to be here any minute now. All right. Lakewood Elementary, here we are. This is where I actually belong, not that silly special school. Now, time to go to Miss Stillwater's class before the tardy bell rings. This kid looks very familiar. I saw him a lot last school year. I know, right. This is only the second time we've seen him here at Lakewood Elementary this school year. Well, actually, I got transferred to a new school by mistake this year, and that's why I got sent back here to Lakewood Elementary. Now I have Miss Stillwater again, finally. Is that so? Yes, this is why I'm happy to be back at good old Lakewood Elementary. Oh, I see. And is it true that you had Miss Stillwater last year? Yes, I was in her class last year, and that's also why I have her again after that mistake of sending me to a different school. Good morning class, wait, what? Joseph, what are you doing here in my class? Miss Morgan told you that you're not allowed at this school anymore, after what you did to my computer last month. Miss Stillwater, I can explain all of this. You see, transferring me to the special school was a mistake. Joseph, I don't want to hear a word from you. 
Principal's office, now. <laughs> I belong at this school 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 How could you send me to the special school for no reason Joseph I'm going to have to carry you to the principal's office I don't have time to deal with your childish tantrums anymore because I need to teach a class you know Miss Stillwater, thanks for bringing Joseph to my office. I saw what he did on the surveillance footage. Miss Morgan, you deal with Joseph, I have to teach my class. Arthur, Matt the Go Animator, what are you all doing here? Joseph, Miss Morgan called us over here because we are tired of you causing trouble at Lakewood Elementary School. Why would you come back to this school after you were told not to after installing your silly operating system on Miss Stillwater's computer about a month ago? You want to know something? It was a big mistake that you sent me to this special school. I belong to this school, and that is final. And I also belong in Miss Stillwater's class. You can't do anything about it. No, Joseph, you don't belong here at Lakewood Elementary. You were causing so much trouble last school year, and that's why you were transferred to the special school. Joseph, I am not going to ask you again. But if you come back to this school in the future, we are going to have get the police involved. And because of what you did, you are going to be doing community service every weekend for the entire summer. Kate and I are also telling mom and dad about you sneaking off to this school, when you're supposed to be at the special school. And when you get home this afternoon, you are going to be grounded. Don't take me to the special school 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 don't take me to the special school. And furthermore, don't ground me. Well, too bad. You're going to the special school, and that is final. And mom and dad will ground you when you get home. Joseph, I'm going to have to take you to school. Wait, what are you doing? Put me down right now Arthur Timothy Reed. And Matt the Go Animator, I'm going to sue you in court for making grounded videos out of me. Stop it. Just stop it. This time, I am hoping that Joseph never comes back to this school, ever again. He has caused so much trouble while he was a student here. This is why I had to transfer him to this special school. I know, right. Who knows if he is going to stop being a troublemaker, not to mention, he throws childish tantrums whatever things don't go his way. You also got that right, Matt the Go Animator. That. And he was wasting time watching shows that he is too old for, instead of doing his schoolwork like he's supposed to. Oh 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 Joseph, are you out of your mind? We can't believe that you went to Lakewood Elementary after you were told not to go there anymore. That is it. You are even more grounded. And this means the entire summer. No hanging out with Tom and Joey, no hanging out with Karen and Arthur especially. And when we go places, like to a restaurant, or shopping downtown, I will likely have to watch over you to make sure you don't misbehave while being babysat. We're also going to make sure that you don't watch Coco Melon during the summer. Because we have told you a million times that you're too old to watch Coco Melon. Now go upstairs to your room and think about what you did. Joseph.
Joseph Christopher Reed, stop slamming doors now. All right, McDonald's, here we are. I will be ordering a Big Mac because I haven't had one in such a long time. Now, let's go in. Good afternoon, and welcome to McDonald's. How may I take your order? I'll take a minute to look at the menu. That's fine. Why are there happy meals for grown-ups? Who could have thought of that idea? It's because we have had grown-up happy meals since this past December after having them for a limited time last summer. Is there anything wrong with that? I demand that you stop selling happy meals, especially to grown-ups. You need to realize that happy meals are only for children, and you should not sell them to grown-ups. Grown-ups are too old for happy meals, period. I am sorry that you feel that way, but we're not going to listen to you. If you don't like the fact that there are grown-up happy meals, then you can leave the restaurant. This is absolute nonsense. I told you to stop selling Happy Meals to grown-ups, right now. I am tired of being nice. Okay, 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 you really need to calm down. Let me get the manager, I will be back in just a few minutes. I'm here to complain to the CEO in particular, okay? You won't get a hold of the CEO because he is currently on vacation in Hawaii and we don't know when he'll be back in the office. Besides, McDonald's headquarters are in Chicago. Eric, is there something I can help you with? Yes, there is a customer who is complaining about there being grown-up Happy Meals on the menu, and she is demanding that we stop selling them because she thinks Happy Meals are childish and only for babies. Are you serious? Yes I am. And she is refusing to leave the premises, and is still acting very entitled. Oh my goodness, we have to go deal with her, right now. This is totally unacceptable. Oh my goodness, not you again. What in the world do you want? Brian, what are you doing here in the first place? For your information, I am the manager of this McDonald's restaurant. Now be quiet and tell me what is going on. Well, I demand that you stop selling Happy Meals to grown-ups because you're the reason behind why everyone is acting like a big baby. I want Happy Meals only sold to children, not grown-ups, and that is final. Wow, are you this deluded or what? Why do you not want us serving Happy Meals for grown-ups? I'm not the right person to talk to number one. And number two, no. We're not going to discontinue Happy Meals for grown-ups. Yeah, what is your problem about Happy Meals for grown-ups, Karen? Be quiet, man-child. Or I'm going to have the manager throw you out of this restaurant, and you will never have a Happy Meal again. You're too old for Happy Meals now. That's it. Get out of my restaurant. You're more delusional than I thought. Not to mention, your behavior is unacceptable right now. Absolutely, no. I'm not leaving until you promise me that you will stop making these childish meals for grown-ups. You have 30 seconds to leave this restaurant before we call the police. I can take care of this. Hey, put me down this instant. I do not deserve to be treated that way. I want you to get out of this restaurant and do not come back here anytime soon. Fine, you win, childish dad. But remember, I want you to stop ordering Happy Meals, stop watching Barney and Friends, you're too old for all of this stuff.
All right, Roger, what is it that we're going to do about this door slamming contest of yours? First, we're going to slam the front door. Then we will slam the door to the computer room and all the other doors in the house. That sounds like a great idea. Now, how does this contest work? Whoever slams each door the hardest will win this contest and watch two hours of Family Guy episodes. All right then, let's get the game started. All right, I will slam this door several times and next it will be your turn. Good job, Roger. Thank you, Nancy. Now, it's your turn. But first, let me get out of the way. All right, Nancy. On your mark, get set, go. All right then, on to the living room. Can't wait for this. All right, Nancy, you go first this time. All right, Roger, your turn to slam the door. Wow, Roger, that was very impressive. I never knew you would slam the door really hard and then break the door. Good job. Thank you, Nancy. Now, where to next? We're going to the computer room. Roger, you have no idea what Alan the Crybaby is missing out on. He is likely watching Coco Melon with his daycare friend. Why do that when you can be having a door slamming contest instead?
That was a good one, Nancy. Try one more time and see if you can break the door. All right then, I'll give it one last try. And then it'll be your turn. Wow, Nancy, that was the best door slamming I've seen you do. Where to next? All right, I will go first. And whoever breaks the door watches two hours of Family Guy downstairs in the living room. Now we know who the winner is. We both did well, and because of that, would you like to watch Family Guy with me in the living room? Oh, absolutely. Peter, we're not going to watch Chocolate Melon. We're going to be watching something else. Wow. <laughs> I want to watch chocolate melon. 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 Please, I want us to watch chocolate melon. Why? Absolutely not. We only watch chocolate melon when Stewie is home. And right now, Grandma is watching over him. Wow. I never knew they would make an episode where Peter was acting just like Alan. Good thing they're telling Peter he is too old to be watching baby shows and not putting him in some big kid daycare. Oh, my goodness, the door to the living room fell off. What in the world just happened? I have no idea. Let's take a look around the rest of the house to see what exactly happened. Oh, my goodness, the door to the computer room is also broken. I think Roger has something to do with this. Let's check Roger's bedroom. Oh, my goodness. It was Roger. He was slamming doors around the house, and that's why he broke three of them. He is going to be in so much trouble. Roger William Schneider, you are in big trouble. Nancy, you should not be here, period. Roger. We can't believe you slammed doors around the house and broke some of them. Why did you do that? Well, Mom and Dad, I invited Nancy to the house to have a door slamming contest. Now that we couldn't bother Alan anymore, there was nothing else to do. So we decided to slam doors around the house. Nancy, get out of our house now. I am calling your parents. Roger, you will be grounded for the entire summer for what you did. You are not allowed to see Nancy during this time, and you will only be allowed to leave the house to go for a walk around the neighborhood. Also, your father and I will be replacing those doors that you and Nancy broke using Go Animate Logic. You will also not watch any TV during the summer. Now go upstairs to your room. 
Why? Nancy, your mother and I can't believe you went to Roger's house, and the two of you were slamming doors, and even broke doors. That is it. You are grounded for the entire summer. This means no TV, no hanging out with your friends, no seeing Roger especially because he is a troublemaker. Now, go to your room and think about what you did. Wow, today is such a beautiful day. Perfect to go for a walk around the neighborhood. And it's about time I get some exercise. It's not good just to stay in the house all day long. Hey Joseph, what are you doing right now? I'm going to go for a walk around the neighborhood. Because today is such a nice day. And when the weather is perfect, it's good to go out and get some fresh air. You better mean it this time. I don't want you going over to see Karen and Arthur, or Joey and Tom. Understand? Mom, I'm not going to see Karen, or Tom. I am actually going to go for a walk around the neighborhood. That's what I needed to hear. Have fun, and don't get yourself into trouble. Okay. Alan, thanks for meeting up with me today. No, thank you for making up for what happened when we celebrated my birthday in February. Anytime Alan, I'm always here for you because we're best friends. Anyways, here are your balloons. Thank you for the balloons, Sarah. You're the best friend I have had in my life. Alan, you two are my best friend. Thank you for the comment. Anyways, what are we doing for your makeup birthday celebration? I was thinking, let's spend the first 15 or 20 minutes here. And then my mom is having us over for a birthday dinner, to make up for when Roger and Nancy took our lunch, and then threw it away. What a beautiful day it is today. And this is why I figured it would be a good idea to go for a walk and spend some time here in the park. Wait a minute, do I see a teenage boy with balloons? Is any too old for that? I'm going to have a talk with him right now. Excuse me. Yes, what is it? Can I help you, kid? What are you doing with those balloons? I gave these to my best friend because today we're celebrating his birthday. Do you have a problem with that? Well, aren't you too old to be carrying balloons? I mean, that's something a five-year-old or a six-year-old would do, not someone your age. I assume you're 15 or 16. Oh no, not this again. Don't you realize that people of all ages can have balloons when celebrating their birthdays, graduation, or whatnot? So no, we're not too old to be having balloons to celebrate certain occasions. Who are you to tell us that we're too old for this, and too old for that? If you want to know something, my name is Joseph, and I am 12 years old. And next year, I will be 13, and I'm not going to have balloons for my birthday anymore because I will be too old for them. Because I'm not a baby anymore. So I think you need to get rid of those childish toys. Look, we don't have to listen to you, kid. So why don't you just leave us alone? We don't have time for this nonsense. No, I'm not leaving you alone until you get rid of those childish balloons. Seriously, kid. You need to stop bothering us. We want to celebrate my friend's birthday, okay? You know what? I have an even better idea. Hey, what are you doing? Give me back those balloons, my friends got them for me. You want your balloons back, 
childish teenager. Okay, I'll give them back. There, now that we'll teach him a lesson that he is too old for balloons. <laughs> Yeah. Alan, calm down, everything is going to be all right. We're going to have dinner with your mom, remember? Yeah, I know. We can get balloons somewhere else, or we can celebrate without balloons. There, now you don't have to be called a big baby because you won't be carrying balloons to your birthday celebration. Hey, that is not very nice. Not to mention, I cannot believe you took my birthday balloons and made them float in the air. But you're too old for balloons. You're not five years old anymore. Kid, that is enough. Now, you need to mind your own business, or else we will be calling your parents. You don't know my parents' phone number, so no, you can't. Well, I can get your parents' number from someone I know personally, and he told me things about you. It's Dave Johnson. Really? No, my friend because is going to ask to him for your parents' for not number. Letting me take the bus to preschool. Hello. Hello, Dave. This is Alan. Hey, Alan, how can I help you today? Dave, you will not believe this. Sarah and I were at the park. She gave me the loons as a present to make up for what happened when we tried to celebrate my birthday back in February. Then this kid wearing a green t-shirt, red shorts, came up to us and said that I was too old for balloons. Worst part, he took the balloons from me, and then made them float in the air. Oh, my goodness. I think I know who you're talking about. It's Joseph Reed. Dave, I need you to do me a favor, I would like you to please give me his parents' phone number, because I need to tell her what Joseph was doing to me and my friend, and won't leave us alone. Okay, I will give it to you on WhatsApp. How does that sound? That sounds perfect. Well, I better get going, but thank you for your assistance, Dave. Anytime, Alan. I'm here if you need anything. Have a nice rest of your afternoon. Really? Because I demand to speak with him for not letting me take the bus to preschool. Really? Joseph, I will because be calling your parents. Now, I want you to stop bothering to him, my friend. <laughs> Alan, I do apologize for what happened. We can go get more balloons if you'd like. No, we don't have to. And I already have balloons at the house. Joseph Christopher Reed, what is wrong with you lately? We can't believe you were bothering Alan in the park, took his birthday balloons, and then you made them float. That is it. You are still grounded for the entire summer. This means, no Coco Melon, no super simple songs, no wonder pets, no hanging out with Tom and Joey. Now go upstairs to your room and think about what you did. Joseph Christopher Reed. Enough screaming and stop slamming doors. Oh, DW, you look absolutely fabulous. And we are especially looking forward to seeing you get your high school diploma. Why, thank you, Mom and Dad. Oh, no problem. Aren't you excited for your special day? I am excited. Finally finished with high school, and I am looking forward to going to college after this. We're excited too. And all of this hard work has really paid off, especially with you getting a 4.0 GPA your junior and senior years. We're so proud of you. 
Anyways, we need to get Joseph downstairs. The graduation ceremony starts in a couple hours, and we need to be at the school gymnasium early so we can get a seat. Don't you worry, I'll bring him downstairs right now. Wait a minute, I think I hear him coming downstairs. Wow, DW, I like your graduation outfit. And congratulations by the way. Why thank you very much, Joseph. I never expected such kind words from you. Also Joseph, thank you for coming downstairs without me knocking on the door multiple times. That is very grown up of you to do that. I was also getting ready to go see Dora the Explorer live. And that will be right after DW's graduation. Joseph, I'm afraid we can't go see Dora the Explorer live, because after the ceremony, we're coming back to the house, and we're having other people over for lunch and snacks. And then I am going to Senior Appreciation Night. We can go to Dora the Explorer live, another time. Wait a minute, you can't go there because you're grounded, remember? I want to see Dora the Explorer live because I was never able to see that show. Please, I want us to go there after DW's graduation. Now Joseph, don't get started with a tantrum, not on DW's graduation. We need to leave in the next five minutes so we can get a good seat in the school gymnasium. And we want you on your best behavior, okay? Okay, mom and dad. I promise I will behave myself at the graduation ceremony. You know the drill if you misbehave just once. Okay? I understand. Well, that must be Emily and her parents coming to pick me up and take me to the school where I will meet up with the rest of my graduating class. See you all later. In a few minutes, we're going to head over to the gymnasium, and we're going to find a good seat. Good thing we got here early, because there are more people arriving. And the gymnasium is going to be full. Hey mom and dad. What is it, Joseph? May I please use the restroom? Yes you may. But please be sure to be back within the next 15 minutes. I have a very bad feeling that Joseph is going to sneak off somewhere. Well, I think it's about time that Joseph shows up here at the park. We are going to see Dora the Explorer at the Civic Auditorium. I know, he is going to be here any minute now, and then we will go to the auditorium. Larry, Karen. I see him coming this way. Hey Karen, Arthur, Larry Loud, it's been months since I last saw you. I know, right. Do you remember when we last saw each other? Oh, wait a minute. I was there when you turned your classroom at school into a big kid preschool. Yeah, I remember that day. We were having a lot of fun, until Mr. Parker found us. So, what are you all waiting for? Let's head on over to the auditorium. Alright, looks like we are lost somewhere. But you know what this means. If you need to get somewhere, if you are lost, then what is it that you need to have? Then you come to me, the map. I will show you where you are and the place that you need to get. That's right, you need me, the map. Okay, according to the map, I am right here. And my destination is about three more miles away. All right then, let's go.
one hour later. We just arrived at our destination. Thanks for the map for guiding us here. Otherwise, we would not have made it. We would still be lost. You know what, this is a so much better than DW's graduation. I couldn't agree with you more Joseph. Why sit for two hours, with nothing to do? While instead, you come with us to a live performance of preschool shows. This is one of the reasons I moved out of the Loud House. I no longer wanted to attend any more graduation ceremonies because they were hours long, and very boring. Dora, Winifred, read. David, do you have any idea where Joseph is? He said he was going to use the restroom, but he hasn't been back since. I very likely know what happened. He wanted to go to the Dora the Explorer show, and he claimed it was after the ceremony. It's actually going on right now. How do you know this, Kate? I remember looking online for the tickets to the graduation ceremony on Ticketmaster.com, and I found tickets for the Dora the Explorer show. Oh, my. Goodness, I had a feeling Joseph would sneak out of DW's graduation ceremony to go to the Dora the Explorer show with his troublemaker friends. David, you stay here with the kids, and I will pick up Joseph and take him home. Joseph Christopher Reed, Joseph Christopher Reed, Joseph Christopher Reed, get over here right now 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 now. I can't believe that you ditched DW's high school graduation to attend the Dora the Explorer show. You knew that DW's graduation was important. You are in big trouble, let's go home now. <laughs> I don't want to go home. 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 We're going home, and you're grounded for the entire summer. Go to your room now and think about what you did. Wow. Joseph Christopher Reed, enough, slamming, doors. All right, today is going to be the first day of the summer 2024 semester. So, first thing, we're going over the syllabus. There will be three exams. The first one is on the 21st. The next one will be July 12th, and the last one on July 26th. Yes you may, but please be sure to be back within the next 15 minutes. Now, that said, let's begin with some math. The first question is going to be for Joseph. Remember during the school year, we were learning about fractions. Here is your question. A family of five is sharing a pizza with 10 slices. How many slices does each person get? Well, in this family of five, mom gets two slices, dad also gets two slices. Then, JJ, Tom Tom, and Yo Yo also each get two slices of pizza. That's correct, Joseph. However, what did we say about Coco Melon during class? Who in the right mind watches Coco Melon at age 11 or 12? 
I know, he should know that by now, he is too old for that stuff. We're not in preschool anymore. Hey, I am not too old to watch Coco Melon, just like I am not too young for Family Guy. Joseph, no Coco Melon in class. Because it is a distraction from you learning new stuff. And I agree with Kevin and Brian, you're too old for Coco Melon, like I've told you millions of times. How dare you insult JJ, Tom Tom, and Yo Yo? You know you can get in trouble for that. Joseph, for the love of Peter Piper Pizza, don't throw another tantrum in class. I had to deal with them enough during the school year. So will you please calm down so I can continue with today's lesson? Seriously, who throws tantrums at 11 years old? This kid is acting like he is 3 years old or something. I agree with you 100%. This is getting very embarrassing. More importantly, this is wasting our time when we can be learning things instead of dealing with this crybaby. <laughs> I want Coco Melon at school. 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 Please, Coco Melon belongs here. Get up off the floor right now. Calm down and get back in your seat, so I can teach today's lesson. For the one millionth time, we're not doing Coco Melon in any of our lessons because this is not preschool. That's it. Joseph, I am going to have to send you to the quiet room for at least 15 minutes. Don't send me to the quiet room. 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 I don't want to go there. Hey, put me down this instant. I do not deserve to be treated like that. Stop it. Just stop it. Wow. I hope this kid isn't in our class for the rest of the semester if he continues to act this childish. So embarrassing. I know, right. Acting like he's three years old when he is 11 or 12 years old. Hello, Joseph. Hey. So... I take it that Mr. Parker sent you here to the quiet room, is that right? Exactly. I was sent here because I made a suggestion that the class should do math problems using characters from Coco Melon. And I got very upset because he said he wasn't going to do that. I see. Well, you see, the other kids in his class aren't into Coco Melon. Anyways, what if we did some math problems and we used character from SpongeBob SquarePants? You know what, I also like Spongebob. That too is one of my favorite shows in the whole wide world. Why didn't you say so? I have a nephew and a niece who both like Spongebob. Anyways, let's get down to business. Here's the first problem. Spongebob and Patrick are sharing a pizza with eight slices total. Each get one half of the pizza pie. How many slices do SpongeBob and Patrick each get? Well, because a pizza has eight slices, Patrick and SpongeBob only get half of the pie. They get four slices each. Good job. Here's the next one. What is one half plus one third? First, you have to multiply one half by three, and you get three sixths. Then you multiply one third by two, and get two sixths. Add them up, and you get five sixths. Really good, Joseph. You're much better at math than you think you are, and I think you should be in the sixth grade next school year. Exactly, but I had to repeat the fifth grade. 
Well, that's partly because you tend to learn at a slower pace than other kids your age. Oh, I see. When Mr. Parker comes back for you, then we can have a meeting in the principal's office about your academic performance. That sounds like a wonderful idea. So, what would you like to do before Mr. Parker comes back? I'm thinking, let's play some board games. I've never played them in quite a while. First, we can play Clue, then we play Monopoly. That sounds like a great idea, Joseph. All right, looks like I win the second time around. Good job, Jane. Jospy, you can come back to class. Your 15 minutes are up. Mr. Parker, I actually like being in the quiet room. I know, but you don't want to miss today's lessons, okay? Joseph, it's going to be okay. But I don't want to go back to class. I want to stay in the quiet room. Joseph, you don't have a choice. You need to come back to class. All right. <laughs> I don't want to go back to class. 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 Please, I belong here in the quiet room. Joseph, it's going to be okay, but you need to learn to control your behavior. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think you belong in my class anymore. I'll be back to bring you your supplies. Wow, Joseph, I never knew you would get such good grades, usually, you get DS or FS. And because of your hard work during the summer semester, you know what this means? I get to graduate high school early? No. The good news is, drum roll please. You will be in the sixth grade this coming school year. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this. I get to go to sixth grade. 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 Yay 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 yay. All right, Joseph, don't get carried away. You'll still be doing independent study in the quiet room. And I will finally be ungrounded. I get to watch Coco Melon all I want. I get to hang out with Tom and Joey whenever I want. This is the best day in my life. <laughs>